Hello everyone, this is the third stream today where we are building a, an official Webflow app, an official design and extension app for Webflow. Previously, we started already building a an app that was voted by the people, which is um, a way of extending the designer by adding more HTML elements to it. I'm going to make you a walkthrough to it now and we're going to just see everything that we built in the previous stream. Okay, but today we're going to try to finish it. So, let me just jump in into the designer, and you already know it, but if you have it, if you if it's the first time you're watching this and you don't know exactly how to start building a designer extension, remember that this is the third part, so you have two other parts that you can go ahead and check. And we have this code busy here. On the first stream, we created one boilerplate template using the Waffle CLI, and it, this is what we put here in the first folder. And then on the previous stream, on the second stream, we started building the official app that it's located in this second folder. So for now, let me, I'm just going to sit into second and run PM, PM dev. And let's just walk through what's built so far. Let's see exactly what was done. How was it done? And then we can continue. So the app is already spinned up in localhost. So all we have to do is just go in the apps tab. This is the official apps tab from Webflow. We already have the... Oh, maybe we changed the name, but it's fine. No worries. So at some point, I think that somebody developing internally <laughs> changed this name, but it's good. And anyways, we can still use it. And local host, local host, the URL is matching, so we can just launch the developing app. Cool. Okay. So on the previous stream, we added these two very cool, nice buttons that when clicking on them, they add inside the selected element. So if I have a thing here and I have this zip selected, whenever I click on a button, it adds a button to it. <clears throat> and it's an actual button. It's a real button. So it's not a link like in Webflow. So if you don't know it, when you add a button from Webflow, this button is actually a link tag. It's an A, a tag. It's Webflow, it's lying us. So in this case, it's not a, a it's not just a button, it's actually a real button. So it uses a button tag like this. What's missing here though, it's adding the proper attribute because uh, a button can be either of type submit or type button. We'll talk about this in a second. But I want to have that option when adding the, the elements. And I believe that the dialogue was in there, so we can add dialogues. But uh, we didn't add anything else. So for now, it's not doesn't have any content, so it doesn't, doesn't look right. So we're going to fix that. And one thing that I've noticed, I don't know if that happens to you guys too, but the elements that are created custom, with a designer extension, it seems like you cannot delete them when selecting them in the navigator. So I'm trying to hit the, the delete button, but it doesn't do anything. And I have to come here, select them in the canvas, and then it seems to work. So it's probably a bug, but good to know that this is actually happening. So all I want to do now is just do a quick walkthrough of the app in here, which is super simple. It's a spelt app. If you want to learn how to spin up a spelt app as a design extension, we explained that in the previous stream. But essentially it just has this list that it's rendering a few buttons. And each button is a component. So right now we have these two components, button and dialog. And when clicking on the bu those buttons, we're just creating the new element. We are adding some styles to it. We're adding we are adding some children if we need it. And then we are injecting that element. The problem is that we kind of hard coded this logic. So if you check when we click on a button in here, we essentially are creating the styling here that has some properties, but these properties in this case just apply to the bottom element. They don't apply to the rest of the elements, right? So we can refactor this a little bit 
to instead of generating the styles, hard coding it inside the click handler, we can instead just add some directives in here so we can do it better. So imagine that, for example, in here in, in this components array that just has these two components for now, we have another property called styles like this. And then we could do something like name. And in this case, the name would be this. Actually, well, in this case, we don't have the component tab. We would just do button default like that, like that. And then we could have the styles in here. And probably Copilot is going to suggest them. Yes, cool. I love when Copilot does things right. I think that, yeah, we got them. Cool. Okay. So now, because we have this inside the, let's call this the schema, the, um, the definition of the components, we can just pull this data inside the, the click handler, right? So in this case, instead of, you know, get style by name, by name and doing this, we could do component. Actually, no, because we can, we could potentially have multiple styles, right? So in this case, we would do for style of component styles. We want to do a loop in here. We want to component styles. Yeah, it could be possibly in the find. So I'm going to do, I'm going to do a fallback to an empty array in case that th there is no component styles. And that's in this case, we can just move th this logic in here. So I'm going to do the, the style and we're going to get name and styles like this. Yeah, this should not be called styles. This should be called properties, by the way. Properties. Like that. Uh, like that, right? So now, instead of doing this weird thing, we can just get by the name, right? So we get by the name, and then and we just move this logic in here. We're going to change it a little bit, right? And I'm going to do, if there is no style, then we are going to create that style. And we just create the style by doing the same thing, but replacing it with the logic from, so probably with the properties from the schema. So we add create the style using the name and then set properties. We set the properties like this. Look how clean this looks like now. Very clean. And now we just set the styles. So see what I'm doing. I'm setting the styles in here by passing an array with just one item. So this array contains the style and this for looping here will run for every style that we've defined in the schema. What would you do to make sure that we add all the styles correctly to the element in case that we have multiple styles? Okay, so Chavi says um, style dot 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 styles. Okay, that's a possible solution. Now, one downside of that is that inside every loop iteration, you would have to get all the styles, right? Because if I do this, style dot 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 styles, I need to retrieve these styles. So I would have to come in here and say const styles, get styles like this. And I would have to wait for this, like this. It's a possible solution. In this case, maybe it would be better to do it the other way around. So instead of doing, because mm, we probably want to do, to use like the combo classes approach, do you add nested styles? So this would be an approach. That's a good solution, Chavi. Good. Other possible solution, instead of having to fetch the styles every single time and just structure them, could be do, doing a map. So we could do uh, component styles. Component styles map like this. And we would do this. Now, the problem is that we would have to wait for all of this. So it would be an, a promise. And in here, we would get the name and the properties like this. Whoops, wrong place in here. And then we would return the style like this. So all we'd have to do is await for all the promises uh, for all the promises because it seems that you should be async like that and 
hold down. What am I getting here? Calls a defined callback. I believe I'm doing something wrong. So I want to do promise all components. Oh, right, because this must be a defined. So we would do this. Now we're talking. Okay, cool. So now in this case, we would get an array of styles. And all we could do then is if a style says length, we would then do set styles like this. So it's it's another approach. The style object is part of the Waffle Designer API. It represents a style, blah, 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 creating style objects, methods, get style. Combo class collision is not currently supported. The Designer API is currently offer read-only access to combo classes. Oh, I see. So then when we add styles, we can just add a single style to it. Get element styles. Set element styles and an array of style objects. Okay, I want to try it. Let's see what happens. Just, <laughs> just for fun. I'm going to just create another class. And let's say, yeah, let's say is combo. And this property would change the background color to red. I don't know. Let's see what happens. So if we did it right, we are creating two styles and then we're setting the styles to the element like this. I'm just gonna make a console log just in case in here, styles. So we can check that we're doing the things right, but let's try it. Okay, so button. Good. Oh, shoot. But, hold on, hold on, hold on. Hold on. This is a big bug in here. Do you see what's happening? There's just one class. is combo. But the element... Yeah, the element is inheriting styles. Do you think Waffle is going to crash when I select this? Let's see. Oh, it does work. Huh. Okay. And if I check the styles panel. So it's combo, it just... Well, it, it's, it's not a combo class, it's added as a global class. Okay, and but, but on default it's also added as a global class. What if I... let me inspect the element. Let me do some inspecting. That seems impossible. <laughs> yeah, I mean, both classes are here. I believe that it's just that Webflow, the designer, it's not ready to display the classes this way. Seems like, right? Like it's just, we're just breaking the designer. <laughs> It's kind of possible, it seems, but it just, Webflow, it's not ready to display this data correctly in the UI. So for now, we're just going to assume that it's not possible to do it. I'm not going to choose the logic. I think that we can leave it in here, but we can get rid of the combo classes. Now that we have this, what's missing is I want to add some attributes. If we want to add attributes, essentially, we're just going to use the same pattern. And in this case, attributes we can create again a, an array this is going to be name and type and but you know you can see how Kupali is already guessing what i'm trying to do so i want to add the type button to the to the element we could potentially the type submit but i mean you already have form buttons natively webflow so i don't think it's very uh, valuable to do that so we're going to do type button which is essentially a button that you can click on it. So we want to add these attributes too. And I'm going to do the same logic as I did in here. So I'm going to do attributes and 
hate I hate this, but Kapali is doing my like job here. <laughs> Kapali just wrote this and probably is right. Get attribute by name? No, that's not right. Let's see. So essentially, Kapali is just copying what I did here, but just changing the, the, the approach for attributes, which is not a bad start. Well, first of all, we don't want to get the attribute from Webflow. We want to get the attribute. We actually don't need to get the attribute. So we get rid of this. And instead, we I believe that we just inject the attribute. Let me see. So Webflow object, DOM element. We want to set the attributes. Um, set attribute like this. We actually don't need a map. So wrong. Copilot, you were wrong. Because in this case, we don't need to make a anything like that. Let's give it another chance to copilot. So nice. Now we're talking. Yeah. So we want to do this. We want to loop through the attributes in here. And we want to, for each the for the new element, we want to set the attribute to that. So if we did it right, and if we refresh the page in here, um, this now should have a button type attribute. So, so a type button attribute. Cool. We're going to assume that you got this app is kind of complete in a sense that we have the components, we're generating styles, tags, and attributes from them. So then we could potentially add all of the HTML elements from here, right? It's just about adding them in the schema. So that's it for today. And I think that it's a wrap up because I know that the app doesn't look very pretty, but it actually does what it's supposed to. And it's just generating any kind of HTML element and injecting it on the side. So now it's your turn. If you want to build something cool, I would love to see it. So drop a link, just share it on Twitter. I want to see what you built. And if you like this video, please drop a like, um, leave a comment, and we'll see you on the next Friday. Thank you. Thank you.